you know, maybe pumping your tire free at the garage, and then for them to wipe your your windscreen free. I haven't seen any other thing that is free here. Or oh, maybe there is, and I haven't come across it. To buy pop and then chicken dust. For the first time, I saw people using both hands to eat. And I was like, hey, what is happening? <laughs> Welcome to my channel. My name is Bra Jones, and it's your only bra from Ghana, living inside South Africa. AKA Tabo, AKA Tapelo, AKA Sipo, AKA Sibosiso, AKA, you know the name, mention them, mention them. Whatever South African name you give me, I accept. I am now South African. Call me your South African brother. <laughs> if this is the first time you're coming across this channel, please kindly subscribe to this channel. And then don't forget to leave a comment. You know, this is a travel channel with your bra, me from Ghana. And I'm living in South Africa. I'm talking about the positivity. I'm talking about the culture. I'm talking about the beautiful stuff of this country. You know, this channel is all about positivity. We don't have time for negativity. And so please, kindly subscribe to this channel. If you're already a subscriber, may God richly bless you. And if this is the first time you're coming across, kindly subscribe. Subscribe. I pray that may God bless us all and make us all rich. Amen. Today, I'm talking about some cultural differences based on my own experience living in South Africa. Yeah, some cultural differences between South Africa and then Ghana, Nigeria, and some other West African countries. So the first thing that I'm going to talk about is the use of the left hand. So in Ghana, it's actually a taboo for one to use the left hand to do activities such as greeting, such as eating, such as showing a direction to another person, and etc., etc. We believe that it is not proper for one to use the left hand to do these activities because it is the left hand that is used to do all the dirty jobs. When I say dirty jobs, I mean, for example, after visiting the toilet, that is what we use to hold tissue to clean the this thing, you know. Uh -huh. And then we use it to support our nose to sneeze and remove phlegms and all that and coughing and all that you know and even that is the same hand that we use to pick stuff from the ground for example waste and all that and so it is not proper for you to use the left hand to do these activities it is a taboo in ghana so in ghana it is actually a taboo to use the left hand it is said to be unclean to use it for activities such as eating such as greeting like pointing to a direction and then when talking to the elderly, you don't have to use the left hand. It is a taboo. And so no matter how clean you have washed the left hand, it is still disrespectful for you to use it to do these activities, more especially before the elderly. And it doesn't matter. Even if you are left-handed, it is not an excuse for you to use the left hand. Even if you are left-handed, it is never an excuse. It is not proper for you to use the left hand. It is a taboo. But in South Africa, it seems to be different. Using the left hand for these activities such as greeting, such as eating, such as pointing to a direction, giving a handshake or whatsoever, doesn't really matter to anyone. And anyone can use any hand to do anything that they want. And they don't have any problem with it here in South Africa. Oh, yes. And so here in SA, you can use any of the hand to do whatever that you want to do with it. And then no one cares. It's not really a problem. I remember when I visited a local restaurant here in South Africa to buy pop and then chicken dust. For the first time, I saw people using both hands to eat. And I was like, hey, what is happening? <laughs> it's either they take the pop with the left hand or with the right and then the meat or chicken in the other hand and then they will be eating i was like what is happening here <laughs> why are they eating with the left hand <laughs> and so i look around and i realized everyone was doing it the children the youth the elderly everyone was doing using both hands and nothing nobody saw nothing wrong with it and I was like, ew, left hand, 
like how? Hey. <laughs> Travel and see. <laughs> in fact, it, it, it was something to me. Seeing this for the first time, I was like, because I've never seen this anywhere. In Ghana, when you do this, they will crucify you. <laughs> Before I realized, you won't even do it. You, 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 you realize a slap will come from behind. True. <laughs> and it's like that. Even in church, during offering time, you realize that people will be giving offering, putting money in the offering bowl with their left hand. And to them, there's nothing wrong with it. They see nothing wrong with it. It's normal. Hey. <laughs> you know, I live with a man of God here in South Africa. And sometimes I will be running errands with him in town. And they will be meeting people and people will be greeting him. You understand? And then they will be like, hey, yo, pastor, how's it? With the left hand. And sometimes even from afar, yo, pastor, how did my pastor, how's it? Sure, sure, sure. With the left hand. Like, seriously? And they see nothing wrong with it. Even the adults do the same. The children do the same. The elderly do the same. And I was like, these people should go to Ghana. You'll be crucified. <laughs> You know, in Ghana, it's not like, but we, we do greet. But in Ghana, we do things. I don't know. I don't know the word to use, whether to use respect. It's like, we, we, we be like, maybe, oh, man of God. Or maybe you put two hands together like this. Man of God. I greet you, man of God. With a close mark and not from afar. <laughs> you understand? <laughs> so you come and then, oh, sometimes you even put your hand behind you and then, man, to show a sign of respect. That is how we call it. You understand? But here, a show, a man of God, how's it? I was like, wow, I've come to a place. Oh, yeah, in Ghana, we don't use the left hand like that, more especially before the elderly. No, you'll be crucified, sharp. <laughs> but anyway, this is South Africa. I'm Zamzi, my man. Yeah, this is a different country with a different culture. And so if you think you can't cooperate, it's better you leave and go back to your country. Just like that. Yeah. The second thing is that in Ghana, our taxis, we call them trotro. We have conductors aside the driver. And it is the conductor that is in charge of money collection from the passengers. You know. And so when you join a taxi in Ghana, that's trotro. Yeah. It reaches to a point almost at your destination. You realize that the conductor will be like, yo, from the back, make it one one for me. He's talking about money. It's time to pay. <laughs> and then he will be the one to collect the money for the driver. And so he starts collecting the money from the back seat. And then those sitting at the front will be the last to pay. And then now he hand the money over to the driver. Or maybe after work. And then he renders account to the driver. Yeah, so that is how it is done in Ghana. But in South Africa, taxis don't really have conductors. It is the passenger that sits at the front who is in charge of money collection. And I didn't know this. <laughs> but the good news is that I didn't fall victim to this one. And I thank God for it. <laughs> but rather, it was a Nigerian friend that I joined the taxi with that fell victim to this. <laughs> for me, I really like sitting at the taxi front. A lot way back in Ghana. Whenever I get a chance, I will sit there. You know, it's kind of convenient and all that. Yeah. But this time around, I don't know how come I decided to sit at the back behind the driver. <laughs> so this my Nigerian friend that I was with went to sit at the front without both of us knowing that when you sit at the front, it means you are in charge of money collection from the passengers. <laughs> And so, at a point on the road, the driver announced that we should start paying. And now, everybody started giving him his, their money. Yeah, people were giving him big notes. <laughs> and they were demanding for change on all that. And he didn't know what was going on. He was like, ah. He looked at my face, and then he would be looking at the driver. He would look at my face. <laughs> I was also surprised. Ah, what is happening? Why is everyone giving him the money? And so now the driver realized the situation and he was like, he spoke in their language. And I said, no, driver, he's Nigerian. He doesn't understand the language. And said, oh, you know how South Africans, 
Oh. <laughs> And so the, some of the passengers started laughing. They were laughing and all that. And also, the driver asked someone else to come and sit at the front. The driver stopped, and then he was supposed to come back. He was demoted. <laughs> and that is, he was demoted from the front. And then someone else went to sit there. And so he came to join me. When he came, I said, hey, my brother, welcome. <laughs> he was looking at me. Oh, it was an experience, but I thank God it wasn't me. Though I'm not happy <laughs> that it happened to him, though. But <laughs> had it been me, hey, like I would have gotten that from the taxi and I wouldn't join it again. <laughs> oh, travel and see. Wow, wow, South Africa. I really love this country. <laughs> Another thing is that in Ghana, when you pick a taxi, of which we call it Trot Trot Day. You can ask the driver to stop anywhere you want or you want to alight and then the driver will stop and then you alight from the car and then it's okay. Nobody will have any problem with it. But here in South Africa, it is not like that. Taxi drivers don't stop anywhere that is convenient to you, the passenger. So when you reach anywhere, he said, stop, driver, stop there, stop there. No, 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 no. It's either after the robot or before the robots, or I will stop at the garage. You know, robots as uh, traffic lights. We call them traffic lights there in Ghana, and even in Nigeria, West Africa. That is how we call it, traffic lights. But here in South Africa, it is mostly called robots. Yeah, and so it's either you say I will stop before the robot, or after the robot, or at the garage. The garage we call it filling station there in Ghana. Yeah, here they call it fuel garage. You understand? Yeah. Or maybe you say, I will stop at short left or short right. Yeah, these are what we use, they use here on the road. Yeah. And so you don't just tell the driver, driver, I will stop right there. Right? Stop, stop there like how? <laughs> he won't even mind you. Yeah, and so you have to take note of this in case you come to South Africa. Yeah, so I find this to be a culture shock as well. So in South Africa, the fuel garage attendants, we call them a, a, a fuel attendants. Yeah, we call garage filling station, like I said before, there in Ghana. So the fuel garage attendants, they also pump car tires and then they clean the windscreen for you in addition. And it's free. There's no cost involved. Yeah, they believe that it is part of the service paid for when buying fuel, even though there is no cost involved with that one. It is just bonus, yeah. You can even pass by any fuel garage and then pump your tie and no one is gonna ask you anything. Yeah, no one is gonna charge you anything, even without buying fuel. Yeah, even if you haven't gone there to buy fuel, you can pass by and then pump your car tire. Yeah, it's free like that here in South Africa. The beauty of this country. And the fuel attendants all understand. They know this. And so they will attend to you with smiley faces. Yeah. And it's so beautiful. It's so beautiful. Imagine how beautiful South African women are. And imagine a female fuel attendant coming to you with a smiley face. She's already beautiful. And then she's coming to you with a smiley face. Oh, my God. <laughs> but in Ghana, it's not like that. If you want to pump your tire, you go to a vulcanizer. That is how we call them there. Yeah. You pay for your service and then it pumps your tire for you. It's not for free. You will pay. Yes. And it's not even every fuel station or fuel garage that has a vulcanizer there. Yeah. And the ones that has it, they are not for free. You pay for your fuel and then you pay for pumping your tire as well. Or you pay also for them to wipe your car's windscreen for you. It's not for free like that. It's not like South Africa. Another thing that I found different and it's kind of shocking to me is that in Ghana, whenever you visit a shop or you go to a shop to buy maybe groceries or any kind of stuff, at a counter or at a teller, you are given a free plastic. We call it polythene bag. The polythene bag. Polythene bag. South Africans, we say bag. 
Metropolitan Beg. <laughs> wow, South African pronunciation. Wow. <laughs> Beg. But Ghana, we say back. Bag. B A G. Bag. But here they say beg. <laughs> yeah, so Ghana, there's free polythene bag or free plastics. So you put your stuff in it and then you carry it. You don't pay for that one. But here in South Africa, there's something we call nothing for Mahala. <laughs> Apart from maybe pumping your tie free at the garage and then for them to wipe your, your windscreen free. I haven't seen any other thing that is free here. Or maybe there is and I haven't come across it. But when you go to a shop to buy stuff, be it groceries at the mall or any shop, my brother, my sister, you pay for plastic. There in Ghana, we call it polythene bag, like I said. You pay for it. It's not for free. No matter how much things you bought, you will have to buy plastic to put them in. Other than that, you will carry them. <laughs> I remember the first time I came here. I went to a shop. I think it was, I don't want to mention the name of the shop. Fine, it's, it's, it's okay. Yes, I can. It was shop right. Yeah. <laughs> I went there and I bought stuff and I was expecting this girl was plastic. At that time, I didn't know they called the apolitan bag plastic. It was like plastic. I was standing there looking at the plastic. I was standing there looking at the plastic. I said, what are you saying? Come again. He realized I was a foreigner. I said, oh. Do you want plastic? He took one of the plastic and showed me. Do you want this? I said, yes, 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 I want it. You know, he said, but you will pay for it. I said, how? But how do you expect me to carry these things? <laughs> said, yeah, nothing for Mahala, my brother. <laughs> you will pay for it. And yes, yeah, so that's it. Plastic, any shop that you enter, you have to pay for it. And so the foreigners that are doing business in this country, like the Bangladesh, the Indians, the Nigerians, Ghanaians, some of them have also copied that. When you go there to buy, they also want to sell the, the, the plastic for you. They will be also be asking plastic. But me, <laughs> whatever I get there, when I go to a Makula shop, I said, my brother, I'm a foreigner. You are also a foreigner. We all came here. This is not how we do it in our country. Is that not it? Then they will be laughing. <laughs> say, my brother, I don't have money for plastic. Give me this thing for me for free. Imagine we are in Bangladesh. Or imagine we are in Ghana. I will give you plastic for free. <laughs> so give it to me. And then uh, we, we will laugh over that. And then you give it to me for free. But a South African shop. Oh, no, no, no. no. You will pay for it. Nothing for Mahala. Remember that motto. <laughs> yeah, so that's it. So this is where we draw the curtains. Guys, in case you found this video interesting, please kindly like. Let's give this video a like. Let's take this video viral. I really appreciate the way you guys have been patronizing my channel. I really appreciate. I am humbled. I am humbled. South Africa, you are so supportive. Thank you. Thank you. And if this is the first time you're coming across this channel, please subscribe for me. Subscribe for me. Hit the subscribe button. Help this channel grow. Let's go. There are a lot of stuff coming up. And so please help this channel grow by subscribing and then share this to your friends to also be a, a blessing on it. Remember, that the almighty God has created this earth and has given you power to create your own space out of it. Thank you. Till we meet again in the next video. Bye-bye.